we can start with the class 8 civics chapter number 1 that is indian constitution in this chapter we are we want to discuss about the meaning of constitution history of indian constitution why does a country need a constitution key features of indian constitution we can discuss all these things in detail first we want to discuss the meaning of constitution a constitution is a written document that contains a set of rules for government it defines the fundamental political principles and establishing a structure procedure power and duties of government the definition of constitution a constitution is a set of fundamental principles according to which a state or other organization is governed just think about any game in the case of football if i will play the football with hand will it be okay no it won't be so the every each and every game have its, its own rules and regulations so just like that every state procured its own rules and regulations the written rules and regulations of a country that is called constitution the india also have a biggest constitution so we are going to discuss all the the main features of indian constitution in details the next slide we can see that the indian constitution is the longest written constitution any sovereign country in the world it contains 448 articles in 25 parts 12 schedules and 104 amendments next we want to discuss a small history of uh, indian constitution the constitution assembly was set up in 9th december 1946 on 29 august 1947 the drafting committee was appointed with dr ambedkar was chairman along with six other members next year, 4th december 1947 a draft constitution was prepared by the committee and submitted to the assembly it passed 26 november 1949 and it is fully applicable since 1926 january 1950 next year, we, we want to discuss why does a country need a constitution a constitution is a set of rules and principles and all the citizens in the country can agree as the basis basic way and properties in the in which they want to want the country to be ruled so here every country has its own rules and regulations it should be acceptable by the people everyone in the country they should follow its rules and regulations in the constitution we can find the, the do's and the don'ts so each and every country have its own rules and regulations that is called the constitution india is having the the longest written uh, constitution in the world so we have uh, such a great constitution the next point the constitution of the country gives a way to the citizen to live freely as they are being provided their fundamental rights mainly constitution guarantees six fundamental rights the fundamental rights means the essential rights the indian constitution is giving six fundamental rights to its citizen about these six fundamental rights we will discuss in detail in the next slide the next point the constitution also restricted the unlimited power of the ruling government so that the ruling government may not minimize its power misuse its power so here we have the, the ruling government sometimes they will behave just like a dictator or the ruling party they, 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 there is a chance of misusing the power so the government the constitution is having some kind of restriction or they are having some kind of super hand over the government so they are under the control of the constitution because of that the ruling the government they cannot misuse the their power the next step we want to discuss about the key features of indian constitution first one is the federalism second one is the parliamentary form of government third separation of power fourth 
fundamental rights and the last one is secularism so we are going to discuss detail in the next coming uh, slides first one is uh, federalism existence of more than one form of government in the country in india we have government at the state level and at the center panchayati raj is the third tier of government more than one form of government is called federalism in india we can find the government at state level that is state legislative assembly and in central level that is central government or in parliament and in the local level the third tier of government that is called the panchayati raj or in panchayat level on the local level we have the third form of government that is the panchayati raj here the union government the state government or the central government that is the parliament state government legislative assembly the local government that is two type that is in the urban area we can find the municipality and in the rural area we can find the panchayat so the more than one form of government that is called the federalism in india we have more than one form of government so we are a federal uh, we have a federal system of government that is called the first one the next one, the parliamentary form of government the constitution of india guarantees universal adult suffrage for all citizens this means people have direct role in electing the representative we are a democratic country we are familiar with the meaning of uh, democracy the form of government which is directly elected by the people that is called democracy we are the largest democratic country in the world so we know the what is the meaning of democracy so here that is one of the main feature of indian constitution we have the uh, right to express our opinion so we the people the we the people of india directly electing our representative so that is one of the main con the feature of indian constitution the next one is the separation of power there are three organs of state first one is legislature second one is executive third one is judiciary the constitution says that each of these organs should ex exercise different powers and to ensure the balance of power between all three the main these are the three main pillars of democracy the legislature executive and judiciary about this we will discuss in the next slide first one is the uh, here we can see that the separation of power the legislature judiciary and executive the legislature legislature means the elected representatives in central government in central level we can find the mp member of parliament which is elected by the people then in state level we have the mla member of legislative assemblies they were also elected by the people so the elected representative they were known as the legislature and it is known as the law making body they used to make the law and second one is the judiciary the judiciary means the the judge the we can find a different type of uh, judicial system and in the local level, village level the district level to in state level we can find uh, the high courts and in all india in delhi we can find the supreme court so the executing the or the maintaining the law and order that is the main function of judiciary and the third one is the, the executive executing the law that means the the president and in state level we have the governors and in district level we have the collectors and other government officers those who are executing the law or those who are maintaining the rules and regulations or maintaining the law they are known as the executive here we can find the executive that is in the house of the representative and senate that uh, we can find the in uh, parliament we can find the rajya sabha and lok sabha like that the second one is the executive the president is the head and here in legislature the prime minister is the head and in executive the president is the head and in judiciary the supreme court justice the sarat arvind bobde is the present uh, uh, supreme court chief justice the next step, the fourth and the most important feature of indian constitution is the fundamental rights the indian constitution guarantees six fundamental rights they are right to equality article 4 
14 to 18 right to freedom of expression article 19 to 22 right against exploitation article 23 to 24 right to freedom of religion article 25 to 28 cultural and educational rights article 29 and 2030 right to constitution remedies article 32 these are the six fundamental rights which the indian constitution guarantees to all its citizens we can discuss all these fundamental rights in detail first one is the right to equality all persons are equal before the law this means that all persons shall be protected by the law of the country in, in front of the law all are equal irrespective of their differences such as the sex, caste, color, place of birth, linguistics or educational or economic status. In, in, instead of all these, uh, irrespective of all such discrimination, all are equal before law. That is the meaning of the right to equality. So Indian constitution is guarantees the right to equality. We are equal before law. All Indian citizens are equal before law. The second one is the right to freedom. Right to freedom of speech and expression, the right to form association, the right to move freely and reside in any part of the country, and right to participate in any profession. Here, right to freedom. We are free. We are a democratic country. Here, the people are free. We can freely we can express our the thoughts or our uh, express our emotions so we can express our opinion then we can form association if we want to form the political or any other association we can form we have the right to move freely in any of our, any of any part of our country then we are free to choose any profession we can choose any job or we can choose any profession that is the, the these all comes under the right to freedom the next one third one right against exploitation the constitution prohibits human trafficking, forced labor and employment of children under 14 years of age, right against exploitation. Here, we are free and it prohibits some kind of exploitation like the human trafficking, the forced labor and the child labor. So all of these exploitations are legally prohibited. And the fourth one is the right to freedom of religion. Every person has the right to practice, profess, and propagate the religion of their choice. In India, we don't have any official religion. All religions are equal. That's the secularism. So that we will discuss in the next slide. So here, the Indian is the Indian Constitution guarantees equal the rights to every religion and we can practice or we can propagate our religion then we have all religious people have their own rights to practice or propagate their religion and the fifth one is the cultural and educational rights all minorities religious or linguistic can set up their own educational institutions in in order to preserve the preserve and develop their own culture all the minorities, including the linguistic minorities or the religious minorities, they can form or they can start their own the educational institutions in order to preserve their culture or in order to preserve their belief, they can start their own uh, educational institutions. So the Indian constitution is guarantees the special uh, the cultural and educational rights to the citizen. And the last one is right to constitutional remedies. It allows the citizen to move the court if they believe that any of their fundamental rights have been violated by the state. This is one of the most, among these five, six fundamental rights, this is the most important fundamental right, that is right to, the right to constitutional remedies. If anyone is believed that if any one of their fundamental rights is violated, they can directly go to the Supreme Court in order to regain their fundamental right. So we, that is called the constitutional remedy we have the right to get uh, the legal suggestion or uh, we have the right to get all the fundamental rights that is our fun, uh, rights so we can regain it through the supreme court we can regain the next step the fifth one is uh, secularism the separation of religion from the state all religions are equal before law that is the the fifth feature of indian constitution the secularism India is the second largest populated country in the world. Here we can find more than uh, 
uh, 500 different type of religion or the major and minor religions in the tribal group we can find their own minor religions here the state is not giving any importance to any one particular religion we don't have any national religion all religions are equal before the law or before the state in front of the state or in front of the law we all are equal they are not promoting any one religion as a state religion and we should separate the religion from the state and we should give equal respect or equal treatment to every religious people we want to respect each and every religion and we should respect and we should support all the religious people that's all thank you